Sharif El Jamal. Hi, I'm Charles Lee from Fox 5 News. How are you? I'd like to ask you a couple questions. Can you tell us where you got the money to raise the money to put down all that money on the mosque? Where have you raised the money, Mr. El Jamal? Where's all the money come from? Sharif El Jamal. Why won't you talk to us, sir? Why are you running? Why are you running? We have legitimate questions for you, sir. Why won't you answer any of them? Assam, how you doing, sir? Charles Lee from Fox 5 News. How are you, Assam? I'd like to ask you just a couple of quick questions, if I may. I'm not a gentleman now. May I ask you a couple of questions about uh, Sharif El Gamal, please, sir? Mr. Mayor, can I ask you a quick question, please? Mayor's going to the bathroom. Mayor's going to the bathroom. Talk to the press secretary. <laughs> well, that is reporter Charles Leaf demanding answers from from some of the key financial players behind this mosque, which planned for near ground zero. We have been running a series of his reports on the money trail behind this project for weeks now with some very positive feedback from all of you, our viewers. Charles Leaf from our station WNYW in New York joins me live right here on the set. And I think those words, I'm Charles Leaf from WNYW, sends chills down the spines of many of these people associated with the mosque, Charles. Maybe so. I don't know. Uh, all right. Listen, I want to talk about details with you and sort of what you've learned. And I know you've got a couple things that you say are a big deal. Let's start with this. For people who have not been following this anywhere nearly as closely as you have, big picture for us, mm -hmm. where things stand right now. Well, where things stand right now, it looks like they're moving ahead with the development of this mosque and Islamic Center. But it goes right back to not only the imam, who's sort of one of the public faces of this, but also this Sharif El Gamal. This is a real estate guy. The here. guy you're chasing around everywhere. Exactly. He was the first guy that we went to try to talk to. Because this is the waiter. He's a waiter. Just a few years before he got into real estate making mega million dollar deals and buying this mosque, he was waiting tables here in New York City. He also has a bit of a sketchy past. He's had a, a few run-ins with the law. And here he is, lo and behold, right smack dab in the middle of this most uh, controversial story in, in the country. I mean, I know that tipping is good here in New York, but four and a half million bucks for this building when a, a couple years earlier he was just waiting tables. Right. And actually, four months after he bought the mosque for $4.8 million, he bought another building for $30, $45 million. $45 million, which is how we found... One of his associates, a guy by the name of Hisham El Zanadi. That's the second guy you're chasing Correct. down who shut the door in your face. Correct. El Zanadi was backing, co-signing one of El Gamal's loans on that $45 million building for $39 million. So he's staking his fortune for this El Gamal. So we were curious, well, what's the connection here? Turns out that this El Zanadi guy is actually one of the principal investors in the mosque. He put down a good chunk of the change to buy the mosque. He's an Egyptian-born man, a businessman. Well... We uncovered something else that's a little stunning about this guy. Back in 1999, Megan, this guy donated money to a terrorist organization, Holy Land Foundation. Now, he donated the money in 1999. The federal government shut HLF, Holy Land Foundation, down in 2001 and declared it a terrorist organization. Five of its members, its leaders, went to prison. People say, well, he made the contribution in 99. It wasn't designated a terrorist group until 2001. Well, any cursory search of this organization, security experts say, back in the mid-1990s, you would have known that they were suspected of funneling money to Hamas. So you've got somebody who, who has donated money to a terrorist organization correct. who is basically backing this mosque financially. That is correct. All right. But it's... it's you know, it's starting to unravel. Like, the, the true story behind the, the financial trail is starting to unravel. The imam, who's the, the public face right. of this, of this mo uh, mosque, Rauf, mm -hmm. comes out with his editorial today, or yesterday, and saying, look, uh, this is Faisal Abdul Rauf, and he comes out and says, I'm all about building bridges. Look, I just spent two months overseas trying to do that on behalf of the State Department. I'm, I'm a moderate guy, and I'm telling you I'm going to open the, the doors. And he says, uh... I know there'll be interest in our financing, and so we will clearly identify all of our financial backers. Does that put an end to it? Well, it certainly hasn't so far, and we now know that there are eight investors in the purchase of the building itself. Now, it's a separate issue to try to raise the $100 million to actually build, construct this Islamic Center, which they're, they've not even really started in doing that. But we know there are eight investors. They have not disclosed the names of these eight investors. We stumbled upon El Zanadi. We now know and have confirmed that he's one of the investors and Sharif El Gamal. And Sharif El Gamal says they are the only two Muslims that have invested in this. But I, the, other, the other thing that the Imam and Sharif El Gamal and everybody involved in this has said, that we won't take money from un-American groups. We won't take money from Hamas. Well, here's one of the investors, the principal investors in the purchase of the building. Just to get started on this, 
and he donated to a terrorist organization. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, because the imam sort of came out today and, and attempted to try to bring sort of calm and peace and a different dialogue to this. But there are already criticisms of it. Now, he says in this uh, editorial, uh, we are proceeding with the community center, the Cordoba right. House. It's happening. And we're going to do it with the support of the downtown community, government at all level levels, and leaders from across the religious spectrum. He points out that he's very sensitive to the feelings of the families of the 9-11 victims uh, and basically says we're going to seek their support. Your reaction to that? Well, really? There are a lot of 9-11 victims' family members who feel that they've completely been left out of this, that their voices are not being heard, that he has not reached out to them. And the imam says he's building bridges. He's spent a career and life's work of building bridges. Well, this is definitely having the opposite effect. You can have an opinion one way or the other about whether it should be built. But one thing that is really not in dispute is that it's not building a bridge right now. Mm. It's dividing the city and, in some cases, dividing the country. Charles Leaf, very good reporting. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much. Fox